The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning, it's Andy Brownell along with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results on this Saturday morning. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. Nice to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you as well. <laughs> I guess I'm going to start out with what's been happening, because I know everything's changing rapidly for you, just as it is for everyone else, and we might as well get an update from you on how things are going. Sure. And I thought I would kind of gather some facts so that I could kind of give people an idea of what we're seeing. So I looked at um, the stats for the last two weeks of March, and I went day over day what the showings were on our Rochester Remax office showings, 2019 versus 2020. And in those last two weeks, we had 200 fewer showings. So we had 720 showings on our listings last year in the last two weeks of March and only 520 showings in the last two weeks of March this year. That's actually better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, um, and I think some of those showings are actually just the agent and a video camera. Sure. So, I mean, it works, right? Um, I feel like um, our association is doing everything they can to work with us. Um, they've given us a lot of flexibility in rules. Like, for example, we have this thing called coming soon. You and I have talked about that in the past. So if you have an, a listing that you know is going to be a hot item, right, you can put it out there as a coming soon so that everybody gets to see it. They find it online. Their agents send it to them. So they're all anticipating the actual list date. And that way when it hits the market, it's not like, oh, darn, it was here and gone and I missed it. So that was the purpose of coming soon. Now we're kind of using it in a different way you know so if there's people who want to sell their house but they don't want people coming into it at this particular time then we can put it on as a coming soon and the general public will be able to come in when that date arrives how far so out how far out question. how far yeah, out good, can you go on that date good question because initially that was set up as 21 days out and um, now they have extended that to 60 days out. And so even when, um, so let's say I list a house and I say it's coming soon and it'll be available for showings three weeks from now. That means nobody can get in it until that day, including me. If somebody called me and said, I'd like to see it, can you get me in there, you're the agent, the answer is no. The coming soon date is the very first day that anybody can show it. So if I put it out there and I say the, it, the coming soon date is going to be June 1st, that's when it's going to be available for showing. You cannot move that sooner, but what we can do is we can extend it and move it out further. So they're giving us flexibility there. Okay. It creates anticipation, that's for sure. It does. And, you know, the truth of the matter is there are still a lot of people who are saying, my house is on the market. I'm fine with you coming in, you know, bringing in your buyers or coming in and doing a video for them. Okay, so there are still some physical showings going on. We just are trying to cater to everyone and every individual's comfort zone. But once they lock into this, then they're locked in, correct? Correct, correct, yes. So it takes so, a lot of thought, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend... Um, pushing it out 60 days because I guess I'm more of a positive girl. And if they give you that opportunity to extend it, then why not start with, you know, coming in 10 days and then in 10 days, if you feel like, oh gosh, you know, I'm still not ready. I still feel really nervous about people coming in or even start until the shelter in is over, you know, till the end of April or whatever. You know, I know. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. But I was just thinking that as we, work through this and we are all becoming more acclimated to what it means to social distance correctly and uh, it becomes a little less scary every day and 
I'm thinking that, you know, if I went by the precautions that you've already discussed on this program last week and the week before, I, I, I'm thinking that more and more people will be comfortable having folks come in if you follow those guidelines. Yeah, I, I agree. And I mean, I, I have noticed I was out showing houses this week, this past week, as a matter of fact, you know, sometimes the timing is just now, right? The people have a job, they're moving in from out of town, right. they need a house. Or, um, you know, someone just got out of the service, and now they've relocated back to Rochester, or whatever it is. It's not something that they're just picking to choose now to buy. And I think that's what people have to understand. Is I'm not out showing houses to people who are just looking uh, for investment properties right now. I, you know, I'm certainly not putting renters out so that someone can come in and look at those properties. And our association is so mindful, and they're saying, be really responsible and make sure that any buyers you take in are number one, pre-approved, and number two, ready to buy a house. You know, this is not the time to just go out and start deciding which kind of woodwork you like better, which paint colors you like better, which backsplash you like. It's not the time to go, you know, house hunting just to get ideas for your future remodel. I mean, it's clearly serious. You know, we want to keep the traffic down to a minimum. And so therefore, we're really just trying to show houses to people who are in the market to buy a house right now. I saw a comment on social media, Robin, about, you know, how realtors are included as essential workers, that their duties can fall under that category. And this person objected to that. And I thought, well, wait a minute. What if you were the person, as you just described, you're in the military or in Rochester's case, you're a resident and you've been exactly. matched. Exactly. Um, it, it certainly becomes an essential service in those situations. Yeah. And I, I've even actually seen realtors um, make negative comments toward those of us who are actually still out showing houses. And I definitely take offense to it, but I, I feel like what it is, is they're saying, you know, how could you be so irresponsible? And I'm being anything but because, you know, I do all the right things. I have masks in my car. If, you know, I, I meet the buyers at the house. I offer them masks. I offer them gloves. I have hand sanitizer. I bring Clorox bleach wipes. I've had um, one couple that wanted to bring their children. I said, absolutely not. You'll have to take your children to grandma and grandpa, or one of you can stay in your car with the kids while the other one goes in to look, but we're not going to be bringing kids in to, t you know, it's just not the appropriate time. Yeah, you're right. At this point, you're dealing with those essential needs to mm -hmm. meet housing. And then housing is an essential need for folks who uh, have, themselves, have themselves in a situation where they have to relocate. It absolutely is. And you know that um, we I have a large team and we have... Um, people on our team that do things besides sell houses, right? We have administrative people, we have marketing, and those people still get paid, right? We're not, we're doing everything we can to not stop paying anybody because that's exactly what's expected, you know, of, of employers, of small business owners, of people that can keep their people working and keep their paychecks coming. That's is, you hit it right on the, the nail right on the head. That's a, it's an act of patriotism is what it is. Yeah. So, and you know, I am, I'm super excited that, you know, with this, with this um, disaster package that there are, a, you know, there are benefits available to commissioned people that have never been before. So for those agents who are not making money who are not still selling houses. I'm sure there are plenty of them out there. And I'm glad that they have the opportunity to file for unemployment or to some way, you know, make some income. Yeah, it's a, we're all going through a, what a, a challenging and confusing period of time. And I think it's going to take a while for the dust to settle and for everybody to figure it out. And I think the best advice for everybody, and that includes, you know, the business owner, the, the landlord, the, I don't know, the, the company executive have patience and right. and don't make a hurried decision on, on these sort of things. I tell you what, we have to take a quick break, Robin. We'll be right back with more of Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax results on News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. 
Welcome back to Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Andy Brownell, Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results this Saturday morning. Um, Robin, since this all began, have you had any closings? I absolutely have had. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the first time I had a closing that was supposed to happen that didn't was actually yesterday. And that was because um, the people that were buying my listing, it was contingent upon the sale of their home and the buyers of their home lost their job. So oh. they had to back out. And, or I don't know if they lost it or were in fear of losing it. One way or another, they, they decided to back out. So it was fine. We worked through it. And my sellers were very gracious to go ahead and rent their house to these folks until they can get it sold. That way they don't have to um, stay in it while it's being shown. Well, that and works. When it was, yeah, it'll work out just fine. And when it was sold the first time, um, it was in multiple offers. So the fact is it'll probably sell really quickly again. And luckily it was um, the house I had was a vacant house and those folks had already moved on and luckily they were in a financial position to be able to say yeah we can wait for our proceeds from that house how did the process work i know we you talked before you know you explained it that only those who actually signed the piece of paper would actually be in the room but right. when you really did it for real with the other participants remotely connected how did that all go it works just fine so honestly um you know, people are saying, how is this affecting you, Robin? You know, is this affecting you financially? Are you going to be okay? Well, luckily, you remember me saying we had a really busy January and we had a really busy February because the weather was so mild, right? Yes. So the closings that we have in March and April are a result of those sales that we made in January and February, of course. So March and April, we still have, um, you know, nice full slates of closings and we've just done them a little differently like um, instead of sitting side by side with our buyers or our sellers at the closing table they go in sometimes i'm you know in the lobby sometimes i'm in my car outside sometimes i'm at home just on my phone but i'm available for any questions anything that might come up and i've even been on the phone the entire time on speakerphone with the closer during the closing so um, we've made it work you know there's just a lot of improvising like you say changing as we go but we're yeah. making it work i'd like to call it macgyvering it yeah exactly <laughs> feels a lot like that you find out different little cheats that work here and there the technology is amazing that uh, we have these little things we carry in our pockets all the time and now the video chatting tools and everything else that goes with them uh it's not just a toy anymore they're actually Isn't really it useful to you know tools Yep, we've used the um, Hangout for meetings so we can actually all see each other and talk to each other. And um, I've been making it a point to call each one of my team members and just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation each week just to talk about, you know, how are you doing? How are you doing financially? How are you doing emotionally? How are you doing physically? Because, you know, every person is different and some people are crazy stressed out about this. And then there's people like me and people like you who know that this too shall pass. And, and we're, you know, kind of approaching it with a different attitude and staying really positive. Well, you were mentioning how you had the busy period during the winter, which has historically been a fairly quiet period uh, for real estate in many markets. And now you're dealing with what is essentially a winter period in spring, which is normally the craziest time of the year. I, I'm anticipating that this summer, your business could just be completely wild. It's exactly what I'm anticipating. I feel like, you know, we're in the middle of, even other than looking out the window and seeing the green grass and, you know, the buds on the trees. And I mean, other than that, I feel like we're in the middle of a winter blizzard. You know, everything's just kind of still and quiet. It is eerie. It is definitely eerie. It is eerie. eerie. Mm -hmm. But in, in a lot of ways, it's bringing out the best in folks, too. I, I have to say there is a part of it that has been really, I mean, obviously not people getting sick and people dying. That part is horrible. But there has been a part of it that's been a little bit refreshing to me. 
just take a step back, slow down a little bit. Yeah, you're, I, I, I get that. I want to put a front porch out with a rocking chair. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the river view, though. I'd have to look out at the <laughs> cul-de-sac, but uh, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not quite the same. Wave, I can FaceTime. Wave at the neighbors. I can FaceTime with you. <laughs> uh, maybe, I'll do, maybe I should do a video later and put it on Facebook because it's our neighbor's birthday today. And uh, Scott's pretty famous for singing the Jen Pachi style, Happy Birthday, we all know that. Sure. And so he'll be singing it from our front stoop to hers a little later today. And I think I'll, <laughs> I'll tape it and put it on Facebook, give everybody a laugh. We'll have to get him a sound system. <laughs> I, I could do that. We actually had in our little neighborhood here, we have a very little social section of town. And, um, you know, the spring weather earlier this week where it was very warm that one late afternoon, we gathered out front and we all had about 10, 12 feet between us in this big giant circle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Getting reacquainted after the, the cold winter. Nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it's important. It really is important. I do love to see how everyone is being so considerate of each other for the most part. You know, there's always going to be naysayers and there's always going to be people that try to cause drama, try to make a bad situation worse than it is. And I, I will never understand people like that because I feel like... Um, you know, we have to, we're in it together. We've got to stick yep. together. we got to get through this. And we will. And we will. That's for sure. It's, it's you know, a new, a new experience for all of us to have this kind of hardship and sacrifice fall on this much of the population. Um, but it's been done before. And, mm -hmm. and folks have come out stronger on the other end. For crying out loud, the stories my, my folks used to tell me about growing up in the Great Depression Right. And I, if, if this is the suffering that I have to go through to try to protect somebody else's health. Um, yeah, no problem. Exactly. Exactly. We don't really have it that bad. Exactly. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and continue our chat with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. We're back with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results here at News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. I'm Andy Brownell. Um, we haven't really talked, Robin, about what's you know, how many homes are out there? What's what's actually happening happening in the marketplace? Obviously, there's some homes for sale. Do, do you have a, an indicator about yeah, what the inventory so, might be? Yeah, and it actually, it's it it's looking pretty good. Um, currently, we have 297 active listings, so that's it's not a huge amount um, considering we have 304 listings pended. Okay, so. 304 are under contract, waiting for the inspection to be done or just waiting for the closing date to approach. And there's almost the same amount that's still available for sale. So if no more houses came on the on the market right now, I would say we will completely run out of listings before we're done sheltering at home. So I think that um, the market is still looking, it's still looking good. Yeah, that's fascinating that the supply is still that short term. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, um, again, most of the houses that are selling really fast and in multiple offers still to this date are the affordable house houses, you know, 250000 200000 that price sure. range, even up to three hundred. dollars um, But I will say that this week I wrote an offer for a house at three seventy five and got into multiple offers the first day the house was listed on the market. <laughs> so it's not all gloom and doom. And I don't want people to think it is. And I don't want people to be afraid to put their house on the market. I don't want people to feel guilty about putting their house on the market. And that's where when you said you see things on Facebook like, how dare realtors think they are essential, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I could go into why are liquor stores essential, but, you know, I won't. <laughs> you know, everybody has their opinion, right, about what is oh, essential yeah. and what is not. And the truth is it would be wonderful if all of our businesses could be open and it will be wonderful when they can all be open because it's so hard for all these small businesses. And let's face it, the small businesses are the backbone of this country. Absolutely. 
so it's it's it is tough it is tough but i am very um i feel very honored that we are able to continue working and i do want clients to know that realtors are being responsible they are taking necessary precautions they are only bringing people in their homes that are qualified and ready to buy we are not bringing extra people along. We are not doing showings just to be nosy or take a look at it. Those things are not happening. And I think if people have to sell their house now, they should not feel shamed about having to sell their house. And I feel if people are in the need of buying a house, they also should not feel guilty about going out and doing that because it's very important. It is. A roof over your head. is, uh, and, and people are still finding themselves in situations where they do have to move to new communities or even different parts of a town, uh, regardless of what is happening with the stay-at-home situation. It is still going on. Yeah, and so I am, am proud to say that, you know, I am here, my team is here, and we are still willing and able to help you get your home listed and sold and help buyers go out looking at houses. So um, we don't want anybody to feel like they should feel guilty about doing that. All right, Robin, earlier you mentioned that the association, the Realtors Association, had made some changes because of stay at home in the pandemic that uh, involved the pre-listing of homes. I can't remember the exact term you used. Coming soon. The coming coming soon. Yeah. Have, they done yeah. any, have they done any other things to be more flexible? Yeah, they're, they're actually being awesome. And again, just leadership is what it's all about. And we're so lucky to have Eric Brownlow, you know, running our association. He's was a longtime realtor. He's very savvy. He's a smart guy. And he's not going to let us go out there and misrepresent the association or, you know, the the profession of realtors it's just it's not going to happen so whatever we can do to accommodate our customers our clients and make them feel good is what we're doing so it used to be that if you had your house on the market um, as an active listing then it had to be available for showings well now of course in this current climate there are people who are saying uh, I don't really want to take my house off the market, but I'm not comfortable having anybody come in at least for the next couple of weeks. Well, we can just simply put in the listing that it's temporarily not available for showings. And what will happen is sometimes agents will call, like this happened, I found one that said temporarily not available for showings. So I called the listing agent and I said, so this is the deal. I've got a guy, he's only got this weekend to buy a house. That house looks perfect. You know, I don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on the seller, but if there's any chance that we could just get in and get out, we could do it in 15 minutes. So the seller actually agreed and they just sat out in their car while we went and did the showing and it resulted in an offer. So, um, you know, we're just trying to be as flexible and thoughtful to all parties as possible and keep the um, industry going. Are you seeing more response to the virtual tour option? Or Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and that's especially been nice for people who would have, um, and I can speak directly to like Mayo Clinic residents who just matched, who would have normally flown in for a weekend to do house hunting, but they're more worried about getting on the airplane and getting here than they are going in and out of the houses. And so, therefore, um, we've been doing some, you know, just go in and walk around and do a video, whether it be with the iPad, the iPhone, the GoPro, the 360 camera. We've got all kinds of options. And then um, they're able to see it and like it enough to write an offer. So, yeah, we've absolutely been doing that. So that does work. Huh? Wow. It absolutely works. Oh, okay. So at some point during the process, they'll actually go into the home, correct? Yeah, um, typically what will happen is, I mean, I've sold houses where they never see it until closing. So, no, I'm in it okay. like a final a final walkthrough. Yeah. But sometimes they'll come up then for the inspection. Like maybe then they'll say, well, now it's not such a rush thing. We'll drive, you know, and we'll take a few days and get there and come for the inspection. Then they see the house. And then also they find out what kind of condition it's in because of the inspection. And so then they can make a very um, 
informed decision on whether, yes, they want to move forward or, oh, my gosh, this house is not the house for us. We had no idea the roof was so bad or this was that or, you know what I'm saying. And that kind of falls under the standard contingencies that you put in the purchase agreement, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're kind of. With a virtual tour, it's very much almost the same as uh, the regular transaction. It's very, very similar. Huh. Yeah. And, and the clarity of these video cameras that are oh, uh, everyday gosh. devices yeah. now, they're all high def. Some of them are 4K. It's incredible. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, Robin, we've come to that point again. <laughs> it goes so fast. It does. It's been wonderful talking to you. But if somebody has heard the program today and uh, you know what, they, they find themselves in a situation where it is essential for them to have a real estate transaction. And how do they get a hold of you? And I would just like to add, if they just want to talk through, is now the time, you know, what are the pros and what are the cons sure. of listing now or going out looking now, I'm happy to discuss those things. So anybody can feel free to call me on my cell phone at 507-259-4926. And I don't go far from my phone, so I'll be sure to answer <laughs> it unless I'm busy chatting with someone else. Sitting on the porch watching the barges go by. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Robin. Until next week, we'll talk to you then. Robin right, Gwaltney. Take care. You as well. Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group Remax Results on News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM.